Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, in this episode of SRMJ Triple E Questions with Solution, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of SRMJ Triple E. This is an entrance examination that is very helpful for gaining admissions into many colleges in India. So, in order to write such an exam, it's very important to look at sample questions and previous year questions. So we have a set of sample questions from all the four subjects of SRMJ Triple E, which are physics, chemistry, mathematics, and biology respectively. So let's start off with a physics question. A vernier caliper with least count of 0.1 millimeters has 20 divisions of the vernier scale. Then find out the length of each main scale division. So, how are we going to solve this question? Well, remember that the vernier scale has 20 divisions. And for a vernier caliper, the rule is that n vernier scale divisions will be equal to n minus 1 of main scale divisions. So if you have 20 divisions of the vernier scale, the main scale divisions will be 19. Now we need to find out the least count. The least count, or LC, will be equal to 1 MSD minus 1 VSD. So it's basically 1 main scale division minus 1 vernier scale division. That will be the least count. So we have 1 MSD, and our VSD will be equal to 19 divided by 20. So since we have 19 MSD is as equal to 20 VSD, then we will know that 1 VSD will be equal to 19 by 20 MSD. So, the final value of LC will be 1 divided by 20 MSD. Now, the least count is given here, which is 0.1 millimeters. So, 0.1 mm equals MSD divided by 20. So, the main scale division, each the, the value of the main scale division is 20 times 0 0.1, that's 20 divided by 10, that is equal to 2 millimeters. So therefore, the correct option among the following is option D, 2 millimeters. Now let's look at a question of chemistry. The formal charge on the central oxygen atom in O3 molecule is. So, in order to understand this question, let's draw the structure of an O3 molecule. So we have the central atom here, then we draw a couple of bonds towards one of the atoms, and then towards another atom we will draw a coordinate bond and then this atom has three lone pairs. The other one has two, and the central atom has one. So how do we calculate the formal charge of this atom? The formal charge will be equal to the va number of valence electrons of the atom minus half of the number of bonding electrons, and then subtract that with the number of non-bonding electrons. Now since we're looking at the central atom here, the central atom is oxygen and oxygen's valency, the number of valence electrons in oxygen is always six because oxygen has eight electrons. The first two electrons go into the K shell and then the L shell is the outer shell so it has six electrons. So the number of valence electrons are six. Next, half of the bonding electrons. Now remember, this central oxygen atom is, you know, bond is connected to other oxygen atoms by a total of three bonds. And one bond will always contain two electrons. So in a coordinate bond, both the electrons are provided by one of the atoms, while in a covalent bond, both electrons are, one electron is contributed each by each atom. So since one bond has two electrons in it, so the total number of bonding electrons here are six, so half times six. 
and then minus non-bonding electrons in the central oxygen atom are one and two. So the lone pair here means they have two electrons which are non-bonding. So finally you have six minus six by two which is three and then minus two. So basically six minus three gives you three, three minus two gives you one. The correct answer for this question is option B plus one. The reason being that we have six and then these are negative so the final number of electrons would make the positive would mean that there is a positive charge here so therefore option B plus one is the correct answer now let's look at a question of mathematics if the set A has the terms 7, 8 and 9 then the relation R in set A which contains the relation 8 to 9 is symmetric only, non-symmetric, transitive only, equivalence. Well, when you look at the relation, the only term here is 8 comma 9. And since there are no 7 comma 7, 7 comma 8, or I mean 8 comma 8 or 9 comma 9, we can safely say that R is not reflexive. And since we only have one term, R does not have enough elements to be transitive. For the proof of transitivity, you need to have at least three relations together. For transitivity, it's A comma B and B comma C belongs to R implies that A comma C belongs to R. Now let's look at symmetric behavior. Now the element 8 comma A belongs to R, but the element 9 comma 8 does not belong to R. So therefore, R is not symmetric. So we know that R is not reflexive, it's not symmetric, it's not transitive. That means option D equivalence is incorrect because an equivalence relation is a relation which is symmetric, which is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Option C, transitive only, is also incorrect because R does not have enough elements to prove transitivity. And R is definitely not symmetric because the element 9, 8 is not present in the relation, whereas 8, 9 is already present. Therefore, the correct option, the most appropriate option among the following is option B, non-symmetric. Now this option doesn't say non-symmetric only, so that means the option does not the option does not say the uh, option does not say that R is reflexive or transitive. So that means option B non-symmetric is the most appropriate option. The final question is of biology. The epidermal layer is beneficial for jute fibers, hemp fibers, cotton fibers, sun hemp. So we have four fibers here and the epidermal layer is usually found in seeds and fruit. So in order to find out whether the any of these fibers is a beneficiary of the epidermal layer, we need to find out the source of each fiber. Option A is jute fibers. Jute fibers are usually made from the bark of the jute plant. So that means option A is incorrect. Options B and D, hemp and sun hemp, are incorrect. The reason being that in all kinds of hemp, the fiber is taken from the bast of the plant. And bast is what we call phloem tissue in botany. So that means the only correct option is option C, cotton fibers. And the easy way to remember is that cotton fibers are, you know, taken from cotton balls which originate from the seeds. And seeds do have an epidermal layer, so the epidermal layer is beneficial for option C, cotton fibers. So option C is the correct option for this question asked in biology. 
We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, which is Brain Blitz Audios. We have a lot of content regarding SRMJEE with various sample questions in our channel. If you want to access the playlist for SRMJEE and other exams, then please click the link for that playlist in the description box down below. Moreover, if you want to get the latest updates from our channel, then don't forget to hit the notification button again below the video. So, until our next webisode, take care, stay safe, bye-bye for now.